just looks ridiculous. <laughs> I'm like the least competitive person. Molly May bun of the Love Island era. Girls gotta do what girls gotta do. You know, whack out the autumn candles and have a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> no, he's stopping his way too soon. Name a better duo. So why do we do this dance? Are we moving too slow? Cause you need reassure friends. Don't conflate issues. This is such a random recommendation, but this fairy liquid smells insane. We bought it the other day because I don't really know why I picked this scent. I just thought it sounded nice and it smells really, really good. Guys, we're ignoring the state of me because I've just got back from the gym and this is just me trying to get my hair out of my face. I do look a bit like I'm sporting the Molly Mae bun of the Love Island era. <laughs> But good morning, welcome to another weekly vlog. It's Monday today and hopefully the beginning of something a little bit more structured because the last few weeks, I really wanna tell you what's going on but I can't yet because I just don't, I just can't. Like I'm not saying anything until I know that there's something to say, if that makes sense. And I know that some of you are gonna really love it. Some of you will just be really excited for it. Um, it's not like merch or a buying a house or anything like that but it's something that's really exciting and a new little thing that I'm doing, which I know is so annoying to say when you can't say but I just, I don't wanna be like, yeah, this is happening and then it doesn't happen as quickly, if you know what I mean. So anyway, that's that's happening over the last couple of weeks, which is why the last like two or three weekly vlogs have been a little bit all over the place. Today is a work day. It's a work day where I'm getting everything done that I need to get done that's here. So all of my like Instagram scheduling, going through and editing content that I've already got backed up. So I've got quite a few reels and quite a few posts and stuff that I've already done. Um, I just need to like actually make use of them because they're no, they're no use when they're just sat on my phone. So we're gonna go through and sort that out. Um, I'm gonna try and do my gratitude and my journaling because I haven't done either of these in, when is the last time I even opened this gratitude journal? Like I've mentally done them, but I haven't like actually been able to sit and do them. The last time I did it was the 19th of July. It's the 5th of August. Oh, I've been 32 for a month. <laughs> My birthday is a month ago, how mad. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try and sit and do gratitudes, try and journal a little bit, and just have like a nice day of doing work stuff. So it's currently 11 o'clock. We had a really slow morning. We slept in till about half seven, went to the gym, went to Aldi to get some bits and pieces that we needed. Um, we bought these actually, they look really yummy. They're like Cajun chicken burgers. Um, they had them in like the barbecue -y food bit and we just thought they sounded really nice so we got those for one evening this week and just had a really nice slow morning just sorting stuff out and then this afternoon i've got two ads i need to get done for instagram stuff and ugc bits which is if you've seen ugc being mentioned but you don't know what it is ugc is basically where you create content for a brand but you don't have to post it so like brands will pay for me to create the content and then they just get the usage of that content so i've got a couple of those bits to get done as well um i'm gonna try and see if i have time to do a youtube video i'm gonna try and schedule some bits like basically we're gonna have a full work day which i'm really excited about but i do apologize for the last couple of weeks of all things video i know it's been very sporadic there's not been videos going up every time they should have gone up and i have quite a strict schedule on my youtube like i try and do tuesday thursday and sunday and that is a lot of videos a lot of people that i watch or i know of do like one a week one in a blue moon two a week max and three a week is a lot to keep up with but i really want to make sure that i'm keeping up with that because i like posting things on youtube i have a lot of ideas for youtube it's my favorite platform to post on and i've got a lot of things that i want to share so i need to get back on to getting that kind of thing done filmed sorted making myself feel presentable because i haven't looked like anything but this for about four days now and yeah we're just gonna have a day of getting back on track and planning out my week so we're gonna get the daily planner back out i need to find it actually what have i even done with it This is like my lifeline when things are going wrong. And if I don't use this on a daily basis, things start to go wrong, but it's basically a daily planner and you write down your tasks, um, three things to be grateful for, a daily affirmation, and you can put like importance as well. So it's got like a grayed out bit for important bits. This has been my lifeline for a very, very, very long time. And I really recommend it. I got this on, um, well, actually I found this on Amazon and I sent it to my mum to get me for my Christmas present this year, just gone. Um, and then I got gifted one as well. So I've been gifted like a beige color, which is really nice. So I'm gonna fill this one up and then we're gonna go to the beige one, but I'm very excited to organize my world and my life and be less stressed. 
and drink my coffee. Let's do it, gang. I can't take myself seriously with this hair. <laughs> it just looks ridiculous. I've got to go on a 12 kilometer run today. It's the longest one I've done so far. And basically from now until the point of doing this half marathon, I'm upping my long run by two kilometers each time. Normally I'm supposed to do them on Sunday, but yesterday we were really busy, so I couldn't get it done. So I thought today would be fine and we can just do it today instead. But I need to take my knees up because I don't know if I mentioned this in last week's vlog, I think I did, but I have been seeing a chiropractor about my knees and my hips because I could go to a physio. However, um, beginning of the year, I tried to get physio through the NHS, never got called. I was put on the waiting list and told 15 weeks still haven't been called and it's like eight months into the year so i have no idea what's happening with that but i was really annoyed because i literally limped into the doctor's room and like couldn't walk and they still haven't done anything about it anyway so um i went to a chiropractor because i thought they can like click me into place james and i thought it was my hips being out of line and it turns out it actually is that my hips are out of line so like my body slightly tilts to the left so she's basically been helping me to like work on like straightening my back up and stuff and giving me all these different things but the one thing she did tell me to do was to tape my knees whenever I run. Now I did have a really nice bright blue on my knees for about a week, um, but I had to take that one off because it basically, she said as soon as the main two start peeling, because I have to put like one this side, one this side and one underneath. Um, don't quote me on this by the way, like if you have any knee injuries or knee issues when you run, etc., like please, 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 please go speak to someone. Don't take what I'm saying as like gospel for you because she did say to me, this is like specifically for the type of knee pain that I get. So I don't want anyone to like, you know, go to a physio or go to a chiropractor and stuff. And then they end up with a completely different injury or get worse or whatever. But, um, it just, it was bright blue and I bought pink because I thought pink matches my trainers. <laughs> And there's loads of different colours. So I think because I've got to run the half marathon with this tape on my knees, I think I'm going to make sure that for the half, I've got like more tape, obviously. And you can get skin coloured ones because I didn't really think through the fact that I've got to, you know, wear summer dresses and stuff because it's the height of bloody summer at the moment. So I'm going to get skin coloured and just hope that it's a bit less obvious than bright pink on my kneecaps. Because let's be honest, no one really wants bright pink kneecaps um when it's really hot and sunny outside and you're wearing mini dresses and stuff girls gotta do what girls gotta do if i need to run then i need to take my knees up so we're gonna take them up now and i'm gonna head out it's the first long run i've done with my knees taped and with my inhaler because i also now have an inhaler for running classic of course i end up with all these issues it's the first time i've run with both both things so i'm really hopeful that it means that my run will be more enjoyable a little bit easier and just somewhat you know less stressful because when i run i always have the worry of like are my knees gonna hurt or if not my knees like am i gonna be out of breath and like struggling to breathe because i do get really really out of breath when i run um so like even though i consistently run like 5ks for example like i get very 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 out of breath we'll see how it goes we'll see what happens but fingers crossed I can come home from this run and not be in pain because that would be absolutely glorious but we're going to tape up and i'm going to pop on at the olympics and i will see you after my run i'm documenting all my runs and stuff on tiktok so if you are interested or you are a runner yourself then make sure you have a look on my um tiktok because that's where i typically share all my running bits i have got a whole video that's going to be coming up i've got like one for half marathon and one for the full marathon like little mini vlogs kind of in prep so you are going to be seeing a lot more of that but the half marathon is in a couple of weeks and the full marathon is the london one next year so yeah buzzing i actually can't wait i think it's gonna be so much fun <laughs> we're gonna ignore the state of my face i've not taken my makeup off i basically i forgot i had my makeup on when i went for a run then i still forgot i had it on when i had a shower and i went like this and then i was like oh i've got makeup on um so this is me actually just remembering that I've still got some makeup on. <laughs> but I've been sat for so long watching the Olympics that my hair is basically dry on top of my head, even though I've literally just got out with like, it's going to be, I mean, yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Okay. Major regrets taking that down. 
but um, I've been sat watching the Olympics and never really used to care about it but the more I've got into running the more I like watching the running because I think when you actually run it gives you like a new appreciation of like the skill it takes and you know how even something as much as like how their foot falls on the floor can like change it just I don't know I think it gives you a new appreciation especially when like I okay so I was texting one of my friends and I was saying how like I watched the 5k one which is the 5,000 meter one and the woman that won got gold in like 14 minutes I ran a 5k in like 28 minutes I don't know how she ran it that quickly and like they were literally flying and none of them even were breaking a sweat like they were just chill they were so chill and then I watched Keely, um, Keely Hodgkinson take gold for the 800 meters like literally just glided through like she, she was miles ahead she got to that last little stretch and there was such a clear gap between her and second place wild but i just got really caught up in it and i was like shouting at the tv and stuff and it was great i've never really got into it before and now i understand why people get into sport because that's the first time i've ever 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 been into sport <laughs> apart from i used to really love watching the swimming and i still do quite like watching the swimming because i used to be a swimmer when i was younger if you didn't know i actually used to swim competitively when i was like in my early teens i think the most i ever got was a bronze for breaststroke or backstroke i can't actually i think it was backstroke i got bronze once but i didn't really compete that many times because it used to scare me <laughs> i'm like the least competitive person and i think the idea of being competitive is just like it's just not for me like i'm not i like running i like doing things as soon as you put it into a competition like i'm not bothered i don't care about winning like i just don't care i literally don't care so for me the idea of being competitive I don't really know why that was ever a thing. I think I was just really good at it. And like when I was younger, I just used to swim and I was just really good at swimming. So I got put into competitive swimming. But like, I'm just not competitive in the slightest. So I didn't really care that much. <laughs> but anyway, I am gonna get into bed and carry on reading my book. I'm currently reading this one, which I don't really know if I recommend. If you are not into sexual things, I would steer clear of Credence. It's a bit weird. I read it based on recommendation of a friend and I I don't know how I feel about it. Sometimes when I'm reading it, I'm like, it's a good story. But other times I'm like, this is a little much. This is a little much. But I got told chapter 23 is like, where it gets, you think it can't get any weirder when it does. And I'm about chapter 21, I think. Um, but it is a very odd book. I do think there's a lot of like backstory to it where I'm like, oh, like it's interesting that, that this is the dynamic of this and this and this. And I think I'm like psychoanalyzing the book a little bit too much, but I do like it and I do think it's good. And I think so far I'm giving it like 3.5 stars, but we'll see how I feel towards the end. Cause I sometimes find that it takes me a while to get into a book and because I'm only about 60% in, the last 40% is where it either makes or breaks it for me. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. And then I think I'm gonna do another really lighthearted one quickly um, and read Happy Place because I wanna read like a summary book that just gets me in the summer feels that I won't pick up over winter. So I think Happy Place is quite a good one to go for. And then we'll probably dive back into a fantasy, probably, but I'm unsure yet. I don't really know. I've got, <clears throat> I've got so many that I wanna read on my bookshelf that I don't really know what I'm gonna go for next, but um i'm gonna get into bed and carry on reading and i probably should take this off to be honest but i'm in my ear as much well it's certainly dark today <laughs> it's so dark i've got the lights on i haven't had the lights on at this time of day since winter i don't think but I'm kind of glad that it's raining because my plants are really suffering. I don't know what it, I think everyone's probably the same, but where the weather's been so up and down and it's been so hot, my plants are just not surviving. Like we're not really getting any vegetables from anything. Like the ones that we did have are kind of dying. Like it's just, the garden's not thriving. And I think it is just the fact that it's not been raining. Like it's been so dry. So James and I have been watering the plants sometimes twice a day because they're so crisp and dry. And, um, I'm quite glad for a little bit of rain. I'm quite glad that my plant's getting water. And I'm also kind of glad that we're not burning up because there's nothing worse than trying to get things done and just feeling like you can't move because you're so sticky and hot and sweaty. So I'm gonna have a day on the sofa today. 
I'm going to try and get some bits done. I might actually message one of my friends who works from home and just see if she wants to go and work in a coffee shop together because when it's like this, I love working in a coffee shop and just feeling all cosy and like just tucked up in a nice warm little spot with a coffee. I've got quite a lot of editing and stuff to get done so I think that's just the best plan to be honest. So I'm going to chuck something on the TV that's an easy watch and we're going to get some bits done. I feel like I'm in the mood for like an autumnal candle. It's that gloomy and like... No, it's not cold, but you know when it's like a little bit chilly, like a little bit more mild than normal, feels like that. So I kind of want to just, you know, whack out the autumn candles and have a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> no, stop it, it's way too soon. I'm about to dye my own hair. Am I nuts? Potentially, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to dye my roots with just colour that's basically the same as like this, because this is quite dark. And then all of this bit that's really faded, I'm basically going to drag the toner that I always use on it. So it's like the Bleach London iced coffee one. I've used it quite a few times in the vlogs and stuff, but I'm going to drag that through the mid lengths and ends. So is it going to work? Don't know. But I've got this special brush that helps to like roller it through, so it should be okay. And I've watched it happen many times at the salon and I just thought, you know what? I don't want to pay for a salon anymore. I don't need to. I'm dark now. Like, we don't need to pay for the salon. If it goes wrong, we're going to all over box dye it and I'm going to have to just run to the shop and get another box of the same colour. But I have every faith it's going to be fine and um, I just want to get rid of the greys, to be honest with you. So we're going to give it a go. <laughs> we're on a slightly odd angle, but the hair went well. You can't really see it all that great in the camera, but I basically just somehow managed to do it. I've had my hair tied up for the gym, so ignore the little <laughs> bumps, but I put permanent on the roots and then I put toner on the end. So the toner on the ends was the Bleach, Bleach London Iced Coffee, I think it's called. I'll leave it linked down below, but I've used it a few times and that's what I normally use between going to the salon to keep the brown looking good. And then I used Olea Five, I think it was. It was like um, the Olea Hair Dye number five. It was basically, the only brown that wasn't too dark and wasn't too red and wasn't too blonde, if that makes sense. It's like a nice mid-brown, but it's covered greys for the most part. I did spot a couple, but I feel like nothing's ever going to be 100%. And I was quite sparse on putting it on my roots because I was worried to put too much to end up with like a block. But now I've done it and I've seen how it looks, I feel like I could do it again. So maybe I'll do in future like a kind of tutorial on how I do it I guess for other girls that are going from like balayage darker and want to do it themselves but I'm quite happy with it I really like how dark it is I'm going to do my face and my hair I'm going to give it a bit of a curl because I'm going to go and film some bits today but um for the moment I really like it I just feel like it always looks better when you've got like fresh tan fresh makeup fresh hair so let's do that and then we'll see okay I love it I love it so much I will say though I really don't think I left the dark on my roots long enough or I didn't do enough dye but my roots down the middle just didn't really look coated enough and like they I've put a tiny bit of the spray in just to make it a little bit darker I've got something in my eye I did put a tiny bit more of the spray down my parting just because it was a little bit lighter but that's just a lesson learned for next time maybe it's where I've got the permanent dye kind of on part of my hair and not my roots don't know I really really like the color of it so like I said I used the Olea uh number five and I used bleach London iced coffee on the ends so literally just put it on my roots and then I like dragged it down a bit and just like pulled at it and then I put the toner on and then I just kind of pulled it through again so yeah really like it I feel like it matches my skin tone a lot better but I also I feel like I suit blonde but I like dark I just also quite like blonde sometimes so maybe next summer I might add some like subtle lighter bits to the front again but for now really like it I'm gonna take a little drive to Big Tesco's. So I thought it could be fun to give you a little come shop with me around their clothing. Although I don't actually know if the clothing's gonna be any good there. We've got a few Big Tesco's locally and some of them are rubbish, but apparently this one's quite good, my friends were saying. So let's see what they've got. I'm actually very excited by this video. <laughs> I'm trying to Ooh, it's giving Adenola vibes. Oh, that feels so nice. These are £12, but they feel really nice quality. I might have to try one. These are the kind of things I run in all the time, so I might have to give it a go. But they've got so many cute bits. They've also got these little sports bras with matching shorts as well. Oh, I might have to bring one home and see what they're like. The shape of these is very Adenola vibes, and they're only £10, which is such a steal. And I can see on the other side, I'm going to run around, but I can see a dupe of the Uniqlo bag for a tenner. Ooh. 
They've got really cute bits, actually. I did grab this to take home and try. There's a tie front leopard print top, which we all know I love. And then they've got matching trousers as well with the elastic. There's also a shirt I can see at the back and there's a dress. So if you're into leopard print, you have got a lot of choice. Also, oh my goodness, this one's got loads. They've got some leopard print dresses. They've got some mesh skirts, very era's vibes. Ooh, I love this. This one is £18, what a gorgeous colour. And then they've also got the matching trousers that are 22. So you'd get the whole set for, well, under 40 quid, really. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen so many people wearing this kind of um, texture at the moment in different things. And they've got a top for 12 50 and the trousers for 18 I actually might bring the trousers home because I feel like these with an oversized tee would be so cute, but I would size up by one just to make them a little bit more baggy. There's a cute knitted set here. So you've got the knit top and a matching skirt, which is quite cute. And they do have this, but we're gonna ignore it because we're gonna pretend it doesn't exist for a couple more months. There is loads in the sale though that looks really cute if you're on the market for like matching sets or blazers or anything, they've got loads, but I'm gonna only look at full price because I get sucked in sale way too easily. So they've got some little cords over here that are really cute. They've got some really nice little hats and stuff as well. Some gorgeous plisé sets. Ooh, I keep seeing everyone in this. My friend Jade has this in the green, which is here, but it's like a little plisé blazer, waistcoat and trousers. But Jade had this one and it looks so nice on. The color's gorgeous. Mini skirt and waistcoat sets, cute. Okay, if you're wanting subtle Disney, how cute. This is a Lion King set, but it's really nice. Like it doesn't really look like the Lion King. I actually kind of love the trousers. I think it comes separately. The trousers are really cute. They kind of just look like tropical print, but they've obviously got Lion King on. So cute. Stop it right now, guys. This is like a dupe of my, well, not a dupe. It's like really similar to the one that I've got that's from John Lewis like five years ago and it's still as soft. But they've got a pink and a gray, 24 pounds. This is literally the softest thing ever and it's got a hood as well. There's also a great selection of cozy knitwear, but I'm just choosing to ignore it until the season's over because as cute as this is for 22 pounds, it's too soon. That was such a quick trip. I basically just spent an hour having a little look around. m and is so good at the moment, by the way. And Tesco's is also really, really good. I did almost buy a, like, it was kind of like a movie colour top and shorts. And as I was wandering around, I was like, do I really need to buy this? Probably not. So I put it back. But I think what I might do is in a couple of weeks, because it's currently all like heavy, just sale. Probably didn't pick the right time to do this video, actually. So we're going to bear that in mind. Um, but I think I might come back when it's like actually out of sale, maybe like beginning of September, just to do a little bit more because... It was really hard when a lot of stuff was in sale to show you what's there because there's not really much there, especially FNF. FNF was basically all sale. So um, I'm going to come back and do another part, I think, on a day where it's not as saley. But it was quite busy for saying it's summer holidays. It was quite busy. Um, so I just nipped into Tesco's in the end and got myself some bits. So I got some of this, which I really, really like. It's the Indija sausage ravioli, but it's like a vegan one. It's actually really really good you literally just boil it for five minutes and i always add um oh it's got vegan cheese in it i didn't know that uh it's basically yeah i put a tiny bit of tomato sauce on top and it's really really good you know like um tomato puree and then i've got a diet coke and some tempeh if you've never tried tempeh tempeh temper i don't know how you say it but it's really really good there's some old ladies walking past wondering why i'm talking to myself I always find it really funny when um they're not but i always find it really funny when the person next to you is parked really really badly and you're sat in your car and they come to get in their car and you're just awkwardly like <laughs> but yeah i need to head home head home and get some bits done because it's not even 12 o'clock yet so i've actually nailed it on the timing front and i'm going to try and get a couple of ways to style filmed although it's very dark today it's really giving like I'm about to rain vibes. I have decided though, if it does rain, because I need to do a run today, I've got four runs to do this week and it's Thursday. And basically I did my long run on Monday from last week. So it's gonna actually end up being five runs this week, which is kind of annoying, but it's fine. So I'm gonna do, if I can't do my run outside today because it's chucking it down, I'm gonna go to the gym and do it, which I don't really love doing. But if I chuck an audiobook on, it's kind of okay. I have actually finished Credence as well. I know I mentioned yesterday that I was near the end. I think I read like 150 pages last night. I was so hooked. I had a glass of Whispering Angel and I was just, I was in it. I was invested. Ending, didn't love. The ending, I was a bit like, eh. 
I, I don't know how I wanted it to end, but I don't really think that was how I wanted it to end. But the actual book was really good. The only thing is I definitely had to age up. So whenever I read books like Akatar and stuff, she's obviously meant to be like, what, 18? In my head, she's like 28 because I can't do like teenage teeny bopper characters when they're having sex scenes. Like that just doesn't work for me. So I always age them up in my head. Um, I will say there's a lot of triggers like trigger warnings for credence and so maybe have a little look into the trigger warnings and stuff first because it is very like age gap enemies to lovers like it, very sexy and it's very like raunchy is what i will say some of the books that i've read that people are like so spicy no 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 this is like heavy dark romance so definitely advisory but really good book i gave it four stars in the end the only reason i gave it five is because i didn't love the ending and I'm being a bit harsher on my on my ratings because I keep rating everything five star and I realised I'm actually not really thinking everything's five star. When I read a five star, then I'm like, oh yeah. So I rated it four. I also read Wild Love by, um, is it Elsie Silva? I can't remember her or the author's name. The one who does like Flawless, Heartless, etc. I read that. Um, well, I listened to it as an audiobook. I don't know if I didn't love it because I listened as an audiobook, but I gave it a three star. I just found it a bit like, eh. And there was a lot of background storylines that kind of didn't get tied up. Um, however, I'm not a massive fan of like billionaire romance, and maybe that's why. I thought it was going to be more like country ranch, like falling in love kind of vibes. Um, but it was very spicy and with a billionaire which I'm not always a keen fan. I don't know why everyone loves like billionaire romance. Is it from the Fifty Shades of Grey era? I don't know, but I'm not a massive billionaire romance fan. So for me, it wasn't 10 out of 10, but I did like, I liked it. I just didn't love it, basically. But I will still read the rest of the series. <laughs>